Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for a collaborative warfare extra video. We're flying our HSI Mark 1, just coming down to the uh, Area 51 runway. As per usual, nothing, nothing, well, I don't know why I'm doing this whole trying to hide the fact that I'm about to land on an aircraft carrier. You read the title. Uh, it's not like I lied about that. I just want to get this freaking aircraft carrier. Yeah, this is in our experimental launch facility, Area 51, of course. Um, totally not because it has some weird quick-saving glitch on the water right now, which I'm going to have to solve before I can really use it in collaborative warfare. But I thought I'd show it off anyway, because it's awesome. And you can see me coming down. This is actually sped up. Why it, that's why it looks quite fast. But you can see me coming down at kind of 40 meters per second, trying to line up with the back of this deck. And now we're into one times time of You can see the kind of lag I'm dealing with, but I don't even really see it anymore, because I'm so used to it. I'm deploying a couple of drogue shoots about 200 meters away. And uh, we're coming down, I can't exactly see what I'm doing now, it's pretty much out of my hands. <laughs> I pretty much have to wait to touch down. I'm kind of hoping to catch the back there because that'll slow me down a little more, but we come down right at the back of the carrier, really perfect. This was actually my first attempt, which I'm probably going to tell you later since I just recorded the extra bit of this video. Anyway, we're, gonna, we're still careening down the deck, but are we going to slow down? Of course we are. We don't even need to use the ski ramp on this carrier. Um, yeah, I will be explaining this in depth a little more, but I thought I'd start off with landing on the carrier with a non-VTOL plane. Yeah, that's how ballin' this carrier is. It's gigantic. You can land on it, and I'm gonna, uh, you can land on it just like a normal plane without even increasing your brain talk. You just need a couple of parachutes. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go up the ski ramp a little bit so I can reverse, um, and then this is all obviously sped up so that I can um, show you how easy it is to take off as well. Yes, this is a carrier I've been working on that allows you to take off using the whole deck, like a runway, using a ski ramp. Um, don't worry, all of this will be explained a lot more in kind of the next ten minutes uh, when I actually go to the um, uh, go to the space plane hangar and take a look at everything. Anyway, here we are, and let's just take off, and we're back into laggy one times time accelerate, and uh, yeah, just. Uh, Reading down the deck, and you can see I'm getting some decent speed up. I'm bucking around quite a bit. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, it doesn't usually do that. But anyway, we're getting up to around 30 meters per second as we hit the uh, ski ramp, and we're in the air. Yup, that freaking works. You can just take off and land on this aircraft carrier. Maybe it would be better with VTOLs, but I'll talk about that right now. Okay, so now you join me in the space plane hangar with the carrier. I assume you've just seen a perfect landing on a carrier. Incidentally, that was my actual first try on that. Um, not the first time I ever tried landing on a carrier, those were more explosive. Uh, but the first time when I was like, I'm gonna sit down and record this, it'll take a few tries, but whatever. First time. I know. Perfect landing. But yeah, I thought I'd talk through the carrier a little more. You can see I've kind of merged a few of these craft, which are a little bit see-through right now. Um, just to give you an idea of how big this carrier is. So, what is the carrier? Well, it's an aircraft carrier based on the HMS Invincible classes. Based vaguely and more kind of, I built it and then was like, you know what it's kind of like? Um, but yeah, I'm going to explain a little bit about that. Uh, this weighs 1,500 tons. Um, which is pretty big in Kerbal Space Program, but in real life is not that big. But um, so considering Kerbal uh, KSP is like 10 times smaller, you could consider this would be about 1,500 tons, uh, 15,000 tons even, and the HMS Invincible classes were um, 1,600 tons. And for those of you who aren't British military nerds, the Invincible classes are the, Brit uh, the Britain's old carriers which were retired in about 2010 to be replaced quite soon by the... Um, uh, Queen Victoria classes, which I might talk about a little bit, uh, which are super carriers, kind of almost the same sort of size as Nimitz. Anyway, so, um, this uses, it as its means of takeoff, it's, I guess, a stow bar, short takeoff, but assisted landing, um, assisted recovery even, which uh, means I'm using a ski ramp, much like the Invincible classes and the, um, uh, and the, what is it, the... Uh, Queen Elizabeth classes, um, so the ski ramp allows me to take off more easily because it'll throw me into the air because a takeoff velocity for most of my planes is actually quite low but I've lulled myself into thinking that a lot of them are quite fast because they it takes them a while to pitch up because um, the pivot's all messed up because most of the, it's like the VTOLs take longer to take off because they t take off VTOL VTOLI? Yeah, let's call it VTOLI. Um, so they don't need to pitch up particularly quickly. But yeah, this does work. And you can see I've got three HSI Mark 1s lined up here. And even this one at the bridge 
would still be able to take off with no problems at all because this is a large carrier. This is a hundred meters long. Um, for reference, the Invincible classes are small carriers who are 200 meters long in real life. So this is a really big carrier and you can see that you can land a plane on it if you use the parachutes as the assisted recovery. Um, that's almost like, I guess, uh, well obviously I can't have um, the arrestor wires like on the Nimitz classes um, and I c could use VTOLs which I'll talk about in a bit like the uh, uh, the Invincibles and the um, Queen Victorias we'll be using um, because you know that's quite an easy way where because our all of our all of Britain's carriers always seem to rely on VTOLs and ski ramps um, but yeah and you can see I've got some helicopters lined up on here and you may also be wondering why is that ski ramp on the side surely that unbounces a little bit Okay, it is a little unbalanced, but actually not that bad, and I do have a few reaction wheels just to counteract that. But um, yeah, the ski ramp is on this uh, side so I can have a runway on the right and storage for helicopters on the left, because originally, my slightly older variant, slightly shorter as well, had the ski ramp in the middle and there was no real place for helicopters, because you can see if it was coming down here it might careen into the helicopters. But this is set up so you can take off planes and have helicopters, if you have them very accurately laid down, which... Um, I will be able to do when I design these um, to be able to drive around the decks slightly better with a few air thrusters. The planes, however, will just have to kind of do with foolish manoeuvring. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the, the deck, I guess, is... Uh, um, every, I think, yeah, everything on the deck. Um, it's obviously a hover carrier, that's what these are, these are hover pods, because um, then it can be much faster, and um, uh, because it's hovering and not in the water, and it just makes it generally a little easier to get it into the water and that sort of stuff. Um, you, it, it wasn't in the water just now, because it has a problem in the water with quick saving. It tends to not quite know that it's in the water, so I'll have to figure that out. Um, but yeah, that's probably quite easily figure outable. Um, all right, so what's the kit on deck? Um, firstly, we'll, we have these uh, the grabby arms. These are for, for refueling planes um, and rearming them with bullets or helicopters. And because you just kind of either land on this with a VTOL or a helicopter, or just drive up to this and dock, which I think is how, probably how I'm going to do it. Um, and just remove this one so I can store another helicopter. Uh, and yeah, and then you can refuel and get more bullets, because bullets work kind of, you can see there's some bullet things here, they work kind of like fuel. Um, I wouldn't be able to rearm missiles, which is a bit of a shame, but still, it would make this more defensible. Um, it has two phalanx cannons, uh, these are goalkeepers. Actually, surprise. <laughs> Weirdly enough, the Invincible uses uh, goalkeeper um, CWS uh, is. It has three, this has two. I know, the the comparisons to Invincible keep going. Um, oh, or Illustrious, but they're Invincible classes, I believe. It has a bridge over here, obviously very small for an aircraft carrier. I didn't go crazy with the bridge because there's just no point, um, and I really need a big deck. This also has a massive probe core at the front, so the bridge is pretty much just for show. Um, it has a couple of other means of defense. Um, Mostly, I can't actually get to see these. Oh, I can. Yeah, you can see these missile pods. It has one of these at the back and two at the front, carrying each of them carrying three Maverick missiles for defense against boats, um, incoming boats, and f four Amram missiles for defense against oncoming planes. Um, but the main thing, the main defense against oncoming planes, is of course the planes I have. I can fit three planes on here, probably four if I really wanted, and if I set up the AI mode correctly I could get these to take off staggered, so all three of these planes could be up in the air within like 30 seconds and be shooting down the enemies, which I think is rather wonderful. <laughs> um, the helicopters will pretty much just stay. That's the thing really. When I designed this I really needed to make something that was defensible, because if I'm going to have this this amount of assets in <laughs> just sitting in the ocean, they need to be defended. Um, Alright, so the other things I want to go through, uh, the, you'll probably have noticed these giant things that say Danger Jet Blast on them. These are the uh, QuizTech uh, air thrusters, which are a little overpowered, um, but they are very useful for this sort of thing. They're scaled up so they have a lot of thrust, which allow me to um, reverse and maneuver quite easily. Now the actual power plant for this, it's powered by liquid fuel, I guess um, similar to a diesel generator on the uh, Invincible classes. Um, and it's powered by four engines. Uh, these are 400% scale um, basic gen engines and these are 200% scale. These two engines provide 420 kilonewtons of thrust at peak and these provide around 1300 kilonewtons of thrust at peak which is rather wonderful. It has a crap ton of fuel. It um, carries over 100,000 units of fuel and it has uh, right now, which I'll hopefully improve, an operational distance of... Um, I'm gonna forget... Uh, it's uh, operational distance of... 
eighteen hundred, um, eight, eighteen, eighteen hundred kilometers, which is not great, um, right now. But it is roughly half the radius of uh, half the circumference of Kerbin, so it can go anywhere. But I'd rather double that so it can go anywhere and return. I'm never probably never going to actually spend a whole turn um, moving the carrier around the whole radius of Kerbin. But it would be nice if we could enter multiple engagements and then return to port if need be, rather than just ending up being a sitting duck with just huge amounts of assets on board. Um, yeah, other than that, I mean, there's not a huge amount else to say. Uh, other than, um, well, uh, not a huge amount about the actual ship. It does have some lights on deck so I can see it in the dark and just so it'll be pretty. <laughs> the, the ones at the front are green and the ones at the back are red. I guess they should technically be blue if I'm being... Oh no, it is red and green on a ship. Yay, I did, I did a ship thing. Uh, but yeah, so I would like to talk about the planes because you saw that I could quite easily land an HSI Mark 1 with all of this runway, but... That means I can only really get one on there and have to be really careful of these helicopters. So I guess I could fly one down and store it here and then fly another one down. So HSI Mark 1s are sort of um, viable-ish because they're relatively easy to land after quite a lot of practice. Um, and they are very good fighters and they take off quite quickly. And you can imagine that if I take this one away, in... Um, in, in two turns I could launch all of this because the carrier is technically a ground unit, these helicopters are technically ground units, so in the first turn I could launch the carrier, um, a helicopter and an HSI Mark 1, and the next one I could launch an HSI Mark 1 and two helicopters. Um, so that would be cool. But anyway, why am I not going to probably use HSI Mark 1s? I'm going to probably use my MPAV Sabres, um, the new VTOLs, because they're really effective fighter jets. They can land vertically, which means landing on the deck is really easy. Um, because they're really good at VTOLing, and this is 100 meters by 40 meters, so it's a pretty big deck. And then um, these will be able to... Um, uh, and then and, and then the, the VTOLs can take off as well in the same manner, because they actually have a relatively low takeoff velocity. And you may be thinking, if you're using VTOLs, why do you have a ski ramp? Why don't you just take off VTOL? Because of the AI mode. The AI mode doesn't know how to turn off engines, so when it's in a fight, I don't want it to have full VTOL thrust on, because that would just make it almost impossible to maneuver and fight effectively, so they will use the ski ramp. So yeah, and also, oh, yeah, also cool bit at the back, slightly dipped down bit. Um, does make it slightly easier to land, I guess, but the main reason that's there is if I'm coming in too fast, say 70 meters a second, I just catch my back wheels on here, and it'll slow me down enough. Slightly more dangerous, but, um does just about work. But yeah, I think that's everything. I've covered the weapon systems, the planes, the helicopters, the bridge, <laughs> um, the awesome sea ramp, the fact that it's a hundred meters long. Actually 99.4, but whatever. Um, so yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this because uh, I did do a video um, about a, a, an aircraft carrier bef a long time ago at the start of um, uh, collaborative warfare, but you may remember it was quite small. It could carry maybe one VTOL and three helicopters. Uh, this, and, and nothing could take off from it, so it was almost entirely undefensible. But this, this is a real carrier. Um, the HMS Invincible, or I'll come up with a real name for it. Uh, <laughs> and I may, I may be launching some of these in the near future, maybe not next turn, but maybe in the next few turns to secure some ocean, because it is quite a good defensive structure. I mean, to sail it to somewhere where I could defend an island or something would be rather effective, and obviously quite good for striking. And um, I... If I were to launch this, I would also probably defend it with another ship, kind of like a carrier group. And if you remember my Corvette video, which I'm going to show you the Corvette right now. Um, and you may remember that was a kind of relatively big ship. But let's let's just uh, let's just put this put this next to the carrier. This because uh, this is a Corvette, so it's a very small ship, obviously. But yeah, you can see that's my small light Corvette battleship sort of thing on the deck of the carrier. You can get probably four of these on the deck of the carrier. So yeah. Anyway, I'll probably be designing one of the, uh, throwing one of these out with it as well. Um, so launching a carrier isn't a trivial, uh, is, isn't a trivial manner. I've got to launch like various planes, helicopters, ships. I've got to have resources already so I can afford to launch this. But I think it could be effective, especially for launching helicopters, because they're typically quite short range. So to be able to take them. Um, to within 50 kilometers of a target and have them do a really heavy strike would be quite good. Although these new helicopters do have um, around a 500 meter, 500 kilometer, maybe 600 kilometer range. So, I mean, 
yeah, they can they can do some serious damage, especially from a carry. But anyway, I, I, I'll i wrap this up. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you're looking forward to seeing this, hopefully, on the high seas, doing glorious sea things, killing Nazi penguins and such. I will uh, <laughs> spin KSP with tape. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.